Now that I gave you the whole speech in the little heart that I was holding, I will show you the same structures in the big heart model that we have. Here we have the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. What will give us the orientation to say that this is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle is these big blood vessels that we have here running in the anterior aspect of the heart. By the way, this artery right here is the anterior interventricular artery. Inter is between and is between the two ventricles. So this is the anterior interventricular artery and this bluish line is the great cardiac vein and they run parallel as you can see now if we remove the aorta and the pulmonary trunk right here we can have a better view of the semilunar valves this is the one at the entrance of the pulmonary trunk so this is called pulmonary semilunar valve it can also be called just pulmonary valve and this is at the entrance of the aorta so this is the aortic semilunar valve or just aortic valve. When we open up the heart, we have a better view of the chambers themselves. So here we have the right atrium. And I told you that the right atrium has this muscle, which is called pectinate muscle. That helps us to squeeze every single drop of blood out of the right atrium. That's very important anatomically because look at this. We do not have pectinate muscles inside of the left atrium. So that's a very big anatomical difference. We have the pectinate muscles in the right atrium. We also see in the right atrium right there, the fossa ovalis. We have here the superior vena cava dumping the blood into the right atrium. This right here would be making reference to the inferior vena cava that's bringing blood, the oxygenated blood into the right atrium. And right here, we have the opening of the coronary sinus. Blood, deoxygenated blood from the right atrium passes through the atrioventricular valve on the right side, the right atrioventricular valve, also called tricuspid valve, and goes into the right ventricle. When we look in the right ventricle, we see here these muscle ridges right here, these muscle ridges are called trabecula carnae, but that's not in your terminology list. It's just in lecture, but this is the trabecular carnae in case you want to see it. Now, we see here the tricuspid valve. We can also see the bicuspid valve. Remember, you try before you buy. So the tricuspid is on the right side. The bicuspid is on the left side. We see the corda tendine, the tandem-like cords that attach the flaps, the cusps of the valves to this muscle, papillary muscle. So this is the papillary muscle. Here we also have the papillary muscles, okay? So every time the ventricles contract, the papillary muscles contract, they hold these tandem-like cords down and the cusps of the interventricular valves will not evert and then blood will not go back into the atrium. Nice. We also see here the septum, the wall between the two ventricles. So this is the interventricular septum. We also see here a wall between the two atria. How do you believe this wall was named? This was named interatrial septum.